Hola, welcome to Cocina Valencia. Bienvenido a la Cocina Valencia. Today we are making chile relleno casserole. Chile rellenos are one of my favorite traditional Mexican dishes. The batter making then frying is quite some work. So, for a healthier twist and less labor intensive recipe, I find that my chile relleno casserole is a great tasting substitute to the traditional chile rellenos. The ingredients are super simple. I like to alternate between the two different methods for making the sauce. I'll show how to make both of them and either one tastes delicious with the casserole. I also always make extra so that I have leftover to use for other dishes like huevos rancheros or to use in arroz mexicano, also known as sopa de arroz. We start by washing our chile poblanos and roasting them in the oven at 425 degrees and I like to check and rotate them approximately every 15 to 20 minutes. While they are roasting, we can work with our other ingredients. Now you don't need to follow these exact amounts and can freely add more garlic or onion if desired. It is all based on personal taste. For the sauce, we'll use seven Roma tomatoes, three garlic cloves, half a diced onion, and approximately a quarter bunch of cilantro, if desired, and of course, salt to taste all in a 9 by 12 baking dish. For the filling, any white cheese enough for filling. I like to use Monterey Jack, but you can use any queso mexicano like asadero, fresco, or combination of either of them with cotija. Basically any white cheese. You can also use minced ground beef, turkey, or chorizo, but my favorite is cheese. For the batter, one dozen eggs, a third cup of flour, and a teaspoon of baking powder. When I serve them, I like to sprinkle chopped cilantro, queso fresco, and sliced green onions. And if I have fresh avocados on hand, then I also slice them. Basically, anytime we have avocados in our home, we have them with almost any dish. For the sauce, we start by boiling our tomatoes until the skin breaks. Reserve the liquid as we will use most of it when blending. When your tomatoes are ready, add to the blender along with the garlic cloves, onion, and cilantro. Now, if desired, you can also add some heat to the sauce by adding a chile serrano or jalapeno here, but I find that the heat from the chile poblanos are enough. The heat varies on the poblanos from poblano to poblano, so you never know if you'll get a super spicy one not. So I like my sauce with no heat. Blend until smooth, and once nicely blended, pour a layer to the bottom of the casserole dish of the sauce. Another method of making the sauce is to saute all of the same ingredients instead of boiling. Saute the garlic first, then the onions, and diced tomatoes. Once sauteed, place all of that into the blender and add your cilantro and blend until smooth. Pour some into the bottom of the casserole dish. Meanwhile, our chiles have fully roasted and are ready to prepare. As soon as they are done roasting, I take them out and place a damp towel on top of them while I work with each chile. And we're going to peel them all. This is probably the most labor intensive part of this recipe, um, but you want to make sure that the peel is separated enough so that you can just pull it back. And you have to do it carefully so that you don't tear too much of the actual chile. So you peel back 
See how it's all nicely peeled. If you roast them enough, then they come off easily. And then you want to remove all of these seeds. Now, some of them don't have that many seeds and some of them do. So I like to remove all the seeds from any of them. Do it like so. And you keep on doing this for every single one. Normally, as my mom always taught me, I, I would use gloves because it definitely will hurt if I touch my face. So see how it's nicely pulled, but it's really hard for me to work with gloves, so I choose not to, so I just make sure that I'll wash intensively. So see, this one's nicely peeled and it stayed in relatively good shape. I'm gonna close it and get ready to do the next one after you remove all the seeds. This one's here. I like to pull end off. And again, same as the last one, you take the very top of it here. Some of them, the skin sticks more. You see how nicely this one's starting to come apart. There you go. Just peel it all. Let's see, and then you want to open it. Once you have your chiles all peeled and seeds removed, it is time to fill them. So open them up carefully, place two or three slices of cheese down the center, wrap them, and place them on top of the sauce. Place each chile in your casserole dish on top of the layered sauce. Now let's quickly make the batter by placing the eggs, flour, and baking powder into a bowl and mix away. Then pour over the stuffed chiles. Sprinkle cilantro, green onions, and some more cheese on top before baking. Place it into the oven at 375 degrees for approximately 30 minutes. Don't let it burn and remove it when it starts to brown and the eggs are set. Here is our nicely browned casserole looking super delicious. We'll pour some of our warm tomato based sauce over each serving on top and sprinkle your desired toppings. You'll notice each layer of the chiles and the cheese that melts nicely in between and surrounded by the egg mixture and topped off with the sauce makes it super delicious. You can also serve with rice and beans on the side to complete your meal.
buen provecho. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube at Cocina Valencia and Cocina.Valencia on Instagram. I welcome your likes and feedback in the comments. Enjoy and buen provecho.